Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome back to my five Victorian novels about series. Today I'm going to be talking about five Victorian novels about growing up. So the five books I'm going to talk to you about today are five of my favourite Victorians building romance. Five Victorian novels which are wonderful coming of age stories, all of which are really brilliant books about growing up. Most of these books follow a character from their childhood into their adulthood, some start sort of later in the teenage years, but all of them are really really interesting in terms of exploring growing up. In general I find that Victorian literature looks really interestingly at growing up. Um, especially because a lot of characters in Victorian literature are actually in their late teens and early 20s, um, especially the heroes and heroines are often around that age. So these five books are all ones that I absolutely love and that I heartily recommend. Obviously these are not all of the Victorian books out there in the world that are about growing up, but these five I think are fantastic. So I will start off with two Dickens novels. I couldn't resist putting both of these in because I think both of these are fantastic novels about growing up. The first one is David Copperfield by Charles Charles Dickens. This is a truly fantastic book that I love a lot. This follows the life of David Copperfield from his birth, literally from the moment of his birth, um, into his early middle age I suppose. He's definitely an adult and has been an adult for a while by the end of the book. And this book I think is in many ways a coming of age story. And um, so the very opening of David Copperfield begins like this. Chapter 1. I am born. Whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life, or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show." Um, and the book basically looks at David learning to become a person, learning to become an adult, learning to become his own self and what that means, and learning to find a place for himself in the world. David has a very difficult childhood. His father died before he was born, um, and his mother remarries a man who does not get on well with David um, and who doesn't treat David very well. Everything kind of goes on from there and we follow David throughout his life learning to find a place for himself in the world, learning kind of where he belongs in the class system. He sort of goes from middle class to working class to middle class to working class to middle class again kind of throughout the book. Um, and we also follow his relationships with various people um, including his kind of friends and romantic relationships both um, in his kind of younger years and later and we watch him learning how to kind of discern more what he actually wants from life and in the people around him. It's a lovely wonderful book and I think it's a fantastic coming of age story. One because I think David Copperfield is one of the most fully fledged and fantastically written children in all of Victorian literature when he is a child but also I think as he grows up and as a young man he makes a lot of mistakes and feels very very young um, and definitely grows up over the course of this novel in a really wonderful way. So I highly highly recommend David Copperfield if you are interested in books about growing up. This is an absolutely fantastic read. And the other Dickens book I want to recommend is Great Expectations. This is another wonderful novel about growing up. It's another book where we follow a character from his childhood into his youth and this is Pip, the hero of Great Expectations, who at the beginning of the book is a young boy who has been brought up by his um, sister who's much older than him and her husband after his parents and his other siblings passed away. Pip is from a working class background and he grows up expecting to become a blacksmith until one day he learns that he has great expectations, that he is one day going to inherit a lot of money, that he is going to become a gentleman and we follow Pip as he becomes a gentleman um, but doesn't really understand what that means and he kind of leaves at first the people he used to know behind and doesn't have the proper respect for his past and for his previous life because he is so kind of reckless in his youth. And in many ways Pip, because he is so young, places such an emphasis on class and money um, and sort of being above the people he was with and friends with and loved before. Like so much of this book is about Pip learning who he really is and who he wants to be and learning to be better than he is by instinct in many ways. I love this book. I think it's absolutely fantastic fantastic in so many ways but I love the coming of age story element in it. I love how Pip grows up um, both in the section that is about his childhood and also once he comes to be a very young adult and um, learns about his expectations we see him struggling and stumbling as a young man. We see him not doing the right thing and learning from his mistakes um, in a way that I absolutely love. It's a fantastic coming of age story and I just yeah highly highly recommend this. The next Victorian novel about growing up I want to mention is Jane Eyre. This is a truly wonderful coming of age story like Great Expectations and David Copperfield, we follow the main character of this from her childhood into her adulthood. When we first open this book, Jane Eyre is, I think, between 10 and 12 years old, I can't precisely remember. She's growing up with her aunt and cousins who despise her. 
she definitely feels that she doesn't have a place for herself in the world and when she gets sent away to school she begins to feel a little bit of a greater sense of belonging but it's not until she's 18 until she's an adult um, and goes away to be a governess at a place called Thornfield that she kind of really finds her place in the world and begins to find out more about herself and also meets Mr Rochester it's a fantastic love story it's also amazingly gothic so many fantastic things going on in Jane Eyre but I do think that the coming of age story is fantastic in here like it's incredibly important to the narrative that Jane is only 18 for most of this book and that this is really Jane learning how to grow up learning how to find a place for herself in the world and also learning that she kind of deserves happiness in many ways Jane Eyre is a Victorian classic that I always recommend for teenagers and I think is a brilliant place to start with Victorian literature in your teens because I think actually a lot of Jane Eyre's concerns are shared with teenagers Jane Eyre is incredibly underconfident and worries a lot about her kind of place within the world about her physical appearance about how insignificant she feels within the world around her and the way she learns to become more confident and to learn to accept that she does warrant a place in the world around her I think is really fantastic and is a really like interesting and important message um, for teenagers definitely I found Jane Eyre very helpful as a teenager when Jane Eyre says do you think because I'm poor obscure plain and little I'm soulless and heartless you are wrong I have as much soul as you and full as much heart I always think that's like a beautiful sentiment in Jane Eyre but I also think it's a like fantastic coming of age moment where Jane like asserts herself and her right to happiness and her right to be considered an equal to the people around her I love Jane Eyre so much fantastic novel in so many ways but it's also a brilliant coming of age story the next book I want to mention is Olive by Diana Mullet Craig. This is a truly wonderful book that I adore with all of my heart. Um, it's definitely a book that you will like if you like Jane Eyre and in many ways it follows quite a similar plot pattern. We followed Olive from her childhood into her adulthood and like Jane Eyre, Olive is basically about a person who isn't sure that they deserve happiness, learning to want happiness and learning to believe that they deserve it too. Olive is born with a physical deformity, there's something wrong with her spine which means she doesn't look like the other people around her um, and she is kind of told from her infancy that this means she is different, that this means she is going to have a different life, that she is not going to get married, that she is not going to do what women are expected to do in the Victorian period and that she doesn't deserve to be loved. Um, and Olive basically looks at the character of Olive realising that she does deserve happiness um, and that she does deserve a full life um, and that Victorian society is wrong um, and it's a coming of age story in many ways and um, partly because it does follow Olive from her childhood and looks at her growing up and learning to understand herself and her place in the world better. Olive grows in confidence so much over the course of this novel and grows in what she is kind of willing to want from the world. I love this book so much and I think if you like Jane Eyre you would really love Olive. It's a brilliant coming of age story, a brilliant novel about growing up and just one of my favourite Victorian books ever. Finally, the last Victorian coming of age story I want to recommend is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. Wives and Daughters follows a young woman called Molly um, and what happens when her father, who's been a widower for many years, remarries and Molly suddenly has a stepmother and a stepsister in her house who she hasn't known before and everything in her life changes. It's also an incredibly beautiful love story and it's also a book about grief in many ways. But I also think The Wives and Daughters is an amazing story about growing up and an amazing coming of age novel. Of all the five books I'm talking about today, this is the one that spends the least time in the main character's childhood. I think the first chapter of um, Wives and Daughters, um, Molly is a child, but after that she is a late teenager. I think she's sort of 16 when the book proper begins after the kind of introductory chapter but she definitely grows up both in age and in wisdom over the course of the novel. She learns to understand people around her better and she also learns to understand herself much better, her own feelings, her own wants and also to want happiness and know that she deserves it more um, as I've spoken about with Olive and Jane Eyre as well. I love Wives and Daughters so much. I think it's a fantastic novel in many ways, but also it's a novel about a young woman who has lived a fairly sheltered life, always lived with her father, suddenly being exposed to a lot of new people and new situations and to emotions and motivations that she had never experienced before. And it's about how she learns to interpret them um, and learns to interpret other people and also um, how she learns to kind of judge things and what her morals are, especially when she ends up in kind of complicated moral situations with her stepsister Cynthia, who was not necessarily as moral as Molly, but Molly loves Cynthia and kind of does her loyalty lie with Cynthia or with doing the right thing. It becomes very complicated and wonderful and really makes Molly question the world around her. I love Wives and Daughters so much. I think it's a truly beautiful novel and I think it's really interesting to look at it as a coming of age story as well. So those are five fantastic Victorian novels that are a lot about growing up 
please let me know down in the comments if you have any other recommendations for wonderful Victorian books about growing up. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.